I'm Joseph Mills, and this is Autometer Garage. What's up, guys? Joseph Mills here with Autometer Garage. Back on Project Evo and my friends, it is a very, very exciting day for us here at Il Garage in Addison, Illinois, because we've heard your letters, we've heard your emails. It is time to put an exhaust on Project Evo. And for that exhaust, we reached out to the good folks at Cobb Tuning down in Austin, Texas, who sent us this absolutely spectacular manifold back exhaust system for our Project Evo. Manifold back exhaust system, you might say. Oh yes, because we may have forgotten the best part. MHI 18K turbocharger. Folks, now is when we start making some actual power out of Project Evo. So taking a look at this system here, stainless steel construction all through. The welds are absolutely immaculate, cool, four tip design and knowing what we know about the cob parts we've used in the past everything is just going to bolt right up fit perfectly sound awesome the fit and finish i cannot state this enough some of the nicest gear i've seen for the evolution 10. so super super stoked it's going to be a long day in the shop we've got a new fuel system that's going in cob tuning 1300 cc stainless steel injectors. We've got a new AEM fuel pump. We have a Cobb tuning boost control solenoid. All the associated hardware, gaskets, mounting pieces, instructions, everything was included. This is the Cobb stage four kit for the Evo 10. Guys, let's get back into the shop. I cannot wait to start tearing into it today. All right, so as this is the internet, no video on swapping an exhaust system would ever be complete without the before and after where I start the car and rev it in a parking lot. Worth noting, the car is warm. Folks, don't free rev your engine, especially when the vehicle is cold. So while we wait for everything on the vehicle to cool off uh, and for our penetrating oil to uh, penetrate all of the nuts and bolts on our exhaust system, I wanted to show you this right here. This is the Cobb Access Port V3. And this is one of the main reasons we were so excited about this Cobb Stage 4 kit. So the cool thing about this is all of the parts in the Stage 4 kit are designed to work together. So once you've got everything installed, you can literally just plug this little guy into your OBD2 port and it already has the map that you need for all the modifications to tune your engine to safely deliver a whole ton of extra power. So that's not all the access port does. You've got really cool OBD2 gauges on here. You can swap between maps. So uh, on this stage four kit with these big injectors, uh, we're typically gonna run 93 octane because we're here in Illinois. Uh, but if we wanted to run 91 octane, we could. Or if we really wanted to make a bunch of power, it's also E85 ready and we can just flash that right with the access port here. So one of the coolest little devices uh, and honestly one of the first modifications I recommend getting uh, for the Evo or, or any of the models they cover. Uh, I know they're huge in Subaru, GTR, Porsche, BMW. So uh, exciting stuff. Uh, Cobb access port, check it out guys. So the first thing we've got to do here is pull this strut bar out of the way and remove the intake. Uh, you can see how to do all this very easily in episode one of Project Evo. Uh, check out the link right there. So the intake's been removed, strut tower bar's out of the way. Uh, we've started removing all of the heat shields back here. Uh, and you can see in here, where our boost solenoid is. We're gonna be replacing that and we've got the turbo and everything exposed right there. So super quick, that was literally about 15 minutes 
uh, worth of work for us. So feeling pretty positive right now. We'll see if we still feel the same way at the end of the day. So with everything out of the way, you can see how easy it is to get to the turbo mounting bolts. We've got two nuts, two bolts right there. Uh, there's really surprisingly a ton of room back here. So uh, pretty, uh, pretty interesting setup. So we started off with the best of intentions here, totally planning to do this the right way to tell you what sockets you needed to unbolt the exhaust and whatnot. But thanks to Mitsubishi applying factory corrosion to this exhaust system on this not even two year old car, uh, we decided we're not exactly going to be able to bring it back to stock anytime soon. So we're going to use my favorite wrench to remove the exhaust. So with our exhaust free, we just need to remove these hangers. Now, top tip for you, uh, if you've got difficult exhaust hangers, a channel lock is a great way to get them removed. So with our nice rusty exhaust caught free, we just uh, take our final hanger off. Helps to have a couple of friends to help you out. If you don't have any friends, um, do it closer to the ground. So swivel and a really long extension. That's a 14 up there, but uh, thankfully our penetrating lube is doing the job because downpipe bolts are backing out. Uh, this one was a little bit tighter. We put the big breaker on it and now it seems to be coming free. All right, factory downpipe is free. So now begins one of our favorite parts of any time we seem to work on this thing, removing the underbody tray, which uh, we're not gonna demonstrate here because it's uh, a little bit of a pain, but if you watch our intercooler install video, which you can see right there, it'll show you exactly how to do it. With the underbody tray finally removed, we drain the oil and the coolant out of the vehicle. With the coolant system cap removed, we are going to now proceed to very likely make a colossal mess draining the coolant out of this vehicle. We are attempting to mitigate that in every possible fashion, but uh, Turns out, as seems to be the case lately, everything just kind of works out for us here. So we got that 14 mil off of the black bracket that secures the turbocharger to the block. That was a bit of a bear. Uh, now we've got a 10 mil for the oil return tube that comes from the turbocharger and drops in right above the pan. This is pretty easy to get to with one of our favorite little swivel wrenches there. I didn't see you there. If you're watching this, it's probably because we ran into some technical difficulties filming the installation of our new turbocharger. I'm here to give you a few tips on how that's accomplished. One, if it looks like a heat shield or looks like a bracket, remove it. Trust me. You can see every single bolt that you need to get to, which are all either 12 or 14 millimeter. The problem is, while you can see them from three different angles, some of them are a bit challenging to get to. We recommend long extensions, wobble sockets, and a whole boatload of patience. Here's the deal. It is a job you can do. It is a job you could technically do on jack stands in your driveway. As long as you're patient, keep track of your steps and go through it. I would recommend performing this on a lift as it's going to be significantly easier to get to some of those more difficult bolts. There's nothing incredibly out of the ordinary about the install. It's just time consuming as there's a lot of stuff in the way. With that said, let's get back to the action. So we wanted to show you some of the details here in between these two turbos because using a stock housing, they look awfully similar now. We get in close here, you can see the factory turbo uh, has a much, much smaller compressor. We can see how that goes in when we look at the 18K here. 
Uh, it really internally doesn't share much of anything with the factory unit. So way, way, way more flow. Uh, but in terms of uh, installation, not having to modify everything, because it uses basically the factory housing, it is a direct swap. So we've got a bunch of pieces that we're going to harvest off of the factory turbo to put onto our replacement unit here uh, before it goes back into the vehicle. We've got coolant lines, we have our oil return line. Now rather than using the oil feed line, we actually have a replacement unit uh, that came with our turbo uh, with an inline filter for much higher oil flow to the unit. To get our studs out of the factory turbo, we are using uh, what really amounts to some electronic wizardry here. This is a electromagnetic heating device uh, that uh, instantaneously heats up our stud without any sort of flame or anything. Really some, uh, some super cool technology at play here. Got everything from the factory turbo installed onto our new one, including uh, actually a much bigger inlet tube uh, you just need to torque the elbow on. That's going to be 21 foot pounds right there. And we're good to go. So, in between dyno poles behind us, we got the new turbo into place. Had to wrestle a little bit with the uh, oil drain tube, uh, getting that into, uh, into the block, but everything's in place. It's 22 foot pounds on the bolts to the manifold from the turbo uh, and then a 65 degree turn torque to yield. So the turbo's back in. Reinstallation is exactly the same process, only reversed from taking it out. Now with that said, you will need lots of long extensions. You'll need some, uh, some wobbles for your socket. Probably a good deal of patience because the brackets that were a pain in the butt to take off are a pain in the butt to put back on. But everything does line up, no surprises. Just take it slow and you'll be able to work right through it. Everything does fall into place, even though sometimes it doesn't always seem that way. So for the next step, now that we have this bigger turbo, we are adding this Cobb three-port boost solenoid here. This is gonna allow us much finer control of the boost in our vehicle, allow to hold higher levels and do so with more precision. So this piggybacks onto the factory boost control system and we're going to do that right now. So with the factory boost control solenoid off, we're actually going to take one of the solenoids, we'll remove that from the bracket and then install the cob one in its place. We take a piece of vacuum hose and we just loop the bottom solenoid here and we reinstall this in the vehicle, connect the connectors back up and then we can run our vacuum lines. Our new turbo has quite a bit bigger inlet on it. Uh, because of that, Cobb included uh, this nice oversized silicone inlet tube, uh, which is gonna go to our intake. Now, typically on the stage four kit from Cobb, that's gonna come with Cobb's SF intake, which fits into there perfectly. We already had our AEM intake, which we've been happy with, uh, but we needed to modify it a little bit. So we cut the pipe a tiny bit shorter, put a flare on the end, and roll the bead into it. Thankfully here at Il Garage, it's a full service fabrication shop, so we were able to do that very easily with the tools on hand. Again, if you get the Cobb Stage 4 kit, it comes with the correct Cobb SF intake, and none of this would be necessary. Uh, so just an extra step we had to take. So we've got everything buttoned up just about on top. We ran our boost lines from the new boost solenoid, one to the high pressure elbow coming off of the turbo, one to the wastegate, and then one to the intake. So that's going to reference everything and allow us much more precise control of how the vehicle boosts. All right, and just get the last hanger into place there, and we've got our new muffler on the back of the vehicle. Looks real cool, and a great start to our exhaust system. We come around here, you can kind of see how those hangers are oriented. Obviously, just repeat exactly what you saw on the factory piece. So we've got a super long extension we're using to get the downpipe bolt started. Just got one more of these on the other side, and we'll have our downpipe in place. Now, our mid-pipe bolts up into place. Cobb included some really nice quality hardware, new gaskets and everything. Good stewards of the earth that we are. Uh, we are, of course, going with a catted mid-pipe here. It's a higher flowing catalytic converter, so we don't expect any negative performance gains, but for those of us that need to pass emissions, 
in our local municipalities, this is a pretty solid option. So here's our cat back piece right here. Worth mentioning, there's a little bushing on the stock exhaust we had to press out of the hanger right there that will not be reused. So this all lines up here. You can see our other hanger right in the back uses that factory spot. And it looks like it all lines up just spectacularly. Wow. That is a nice exhaust kit. All right, so mid-pipe piece bolts right up to that catback piece. Again, folks, I just can't say this enough how nice all of these parts fit. It really shows the attention to detail and really the care they put into engineering this because God knows I've put on some horrible exhaust systems before. This is definitely not one of them. Final piece here, make sure you leave everything loose just so you've got a little bit of uh, play, but just get these started up and we've got our muffler bolted onto the pipe, so now we can go through and tighten everything up. So here's a little tip for you. Obviously, it's oily in the shop here. We got oils on our hands and whatnot, but on a new exhaust system, after you put it up, you want to make sure spray a little brake parts cleaner on a rag and just wipe everything down. Uh, so otherwise, the oils will burn into it, and you'll have some gross spots on there. So. So the intake track back together, our last little bit was this sweet Cobb XLE bypass valve. Uh, installs just like the factory one would. Uh, Got to hold pressure quite a bit better for us. Sounds a little bit louder than stock, uh, but definitely not obnoxious. Uh, so we're moving on to putting our fuel injectors on. Now you're going to start with this rail right here. We went ahead and just took this 10 mil out and loosened this one so we can get to these 12 millimeters right here to pull our rail free. So pulling the rail is real easy. You got a bunch of little 10 millimeters for these rigid lines here. There's two 12s to pull the rail itself. And you'll see on the factory injector, these are secured in with these little C-clip kind of devices right there. Now these are our new 1300cc stainless steel Cobb injectors versus the originals right here, so we can see kind of the, uh, kind of the difference between these. Uh, nice note here, when we put in our injectors, we're gonna make sure that we put a little lube on these seals. We do not want to roll this when they go back into the engine. So with some silicone spray on the O-rings on the injectors, we pop them right into the fuel rail. Once everything's nice and straight, push them down in there, and we've got these 12 millimeter bolts right here to reattach the fuel rail. Cobb was nice enough to include these little plug and play harnesses for our injector, so no modification necessary to the wiring. We just plug this into the injector and that plugs right into the factory harness. So our plug and play connectors were a tiny bit bigger than the factory pieces. Because of that, we had these two brackets that secure our wiring harnesses here that were kind of in the way. Uh, so what we did is we pulled these off and actually bent them into the shape that we needed and put them on these little rail guides right here where we removed those 10 millimeters. So you can see one done right here. We're just going to bend this up, put that in place so we can secure these wires properly uh, and keep them from chafing while the engine moves around. To get to the fuel pump, it's real simple. We just got to take the back seat out. Now you'll see this is the back seat right here. There are two little hooks on the front edge of the back seat. This is the back edge right here. So to remove this, you just grab at the point that there's resistance, pop, give it a good tug, it'll come right out. And here is our factory fuel pump assembly. Just a bunch of eight millimeters around the top, pops right out. We took this spacer and this O-ring off of the factory pump to put that onto our AEM unit. Now it slides in place. And that is our fuel pump assembly all put back together. Pro tip, pay attention to how you take it apart because it goes back together a heck of a lot easier. Ask us how we know. So let's put her back in the car. After the fuel pumps in, literally we got a flash of tune onto this thing and fingers crossed, she'll start the first time. Make sure our rubber seal is in place. Be careful 
of the fuel level center arm when you put this in. We got all of our connectors out of the way. You can see there are some little detents on the pump itself that will line everything up for us. And that is how she goes back in. A little spring tension there. And then we'll just thread one of our nuts in place to retain that while we get everything else installed. All right, guys. That's a, not quite the moment of truth, but I'm gonna click key on here and go into our access port and flash a tune. So, real simply, we just go to change map and you'll see they load a whole ton of different maps into here. We have the one that we edited for our AEM intake using the access tuner software. So that is stage four, 93 octane with AEM. So we click that. It says a battery charger is recommended. Guys, you're gonna hear the fans run like crazy for a second. Thankfully, we have an awesome Optima Red Top battery, so I'm not too worried. The ROM is flashed. Now it's gonna reset the ECU learning data. Okay, now we turn the vehicle off. So without touching the clutch pedal, we move the key to the start position to prime the fuel pump, make sure that the fuel pump isn't leaking anywhere, everything looks good back there. Uh, we just unplug the fuel injectors so we can crank the vehicle over a few times and push a little oil into that turbocharger before we go ahead and start this. All right. Turbo's primed, got a little oil throughout the system, no leaks on the fuel. Uh, fingers crossed. Let's see if she runs. time guys, Automated Garage, gonna have some driving videos of this beast, some dyno time and all kind of other good stuff for you. Thanks for watching.